Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. One of the big things that people struggle with when fasting, especially doing the multi-day fasts, I don't think this is an issue with an overnight fast, with a three, four, five-day fast, sleep does become an issue. There's a flip side to that, which is the sleep you get seems remarkable. I mean, by all the metrics of sleep, whatever my aura ring tells me is generally very good. My heart rate variability goes up by, I mean, 25%, sometimes 50%. My heart rate goes down. My temperature goes down. I mean, all of these things that I want to move in the right direction do so. And it's certainly reflected in my sleep staging the best nights I'll ever have from a staging. Deep sleep is 25%. REM sleep is 25%. I mean, these are really impressive metrics. But the getting to sleep, and sometimes the staying to sleep, can be difficult, and more so for some people than others. For me, it's maybe for every 10 nights I go to bed hungry, I'm going to have one miserable night. For others, it's more than that. So backing all of that out, What are your thoughts overall on the relationship between food deprivation and sleep? I've thought about this a lot in the recent years, in part because I've been doing a little bit of fasting myself. Overall, I typically just do time-restricted eating, and that's the way I approach it. I'm not as ardent as you are with fasting. But I get a lot of inbound traffic in terms of my email and from a lot of people who come up to me saying, Look, I do fast and a lot of it is motivated by you and they follow and it's great. But one of their complaints is that I either struggle to fall asleep or I just, I'm waking up and sometimes it's so difficult that it causes me to abort the fast that I just can't deal with the sleep loss anymore. Other people will say, yes, I'm sleeping less, but in truth, it doesn't bother me so much. It's not as though I'm sleepy during the day. It's just that I'm waking up earlier or I'm going to bed later because I'm not falling asleep. So I'm sleeping less, but I don't feel as sleepy as I would do when I'm not fasting. If I were to sleep that little, I'd feel miserable. So it's been enough inbound that I started to dig into the data and sure enough, there's some great animal literature that I think really explains what's going on. And it centers around a chemical called orexin. Now, in the middle of your brain and all of our brains is a tiny structure called the hypothalamus. And despite its size, it has profound effects on almost all of our behaviors. It's fundamental for regulating things like our feeding behavior, our sleep-wake regulation. It's fundamental for thermoregulation. And within the hypothalamus, there is a cluster of cells called orexin cells. Those orexin cells, one of their functions is to actually monitor the body's energy balance. And the way that they do this is by sensing, among other things, concentrations of circulating levels of leptin and ghrelin, which are two appetite regulating hormones. I believe they also sense glucose. So they essentially get a map of the body's energy balance. One of the things that orexin does as a chemical, so these neurons are sensing neurons, but they are also neurons that will release the chemical contained inside of them, which is called orexin. Why is this important? Orexin as a chemical is a wake-promoting chemical. When you release and dump orexin into the brain and the body, it wakes the brain up. It's an alerting chemical, and normally it shuts down at night. And that's part of the mechanism of what we call the sleep-wake switch. It's in the brain. It's these orexin cells. Outside of fasting, Matt, what keeps orexin in check? What attenuates orexin during a fed state? So leptin and ghrelin will regulate that, but it's also regulated by the master circadian clock, by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Many of our hormones and our chemicals, orexin included, seem to be under the control of our 24-hour circadian rhythm. And that's regulated by another part of the brain very close to the hypothalamus. In fact, it sits very close to the hypothalamus called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is the central master clock of the brain. 
And that regulates the release of other things like melatonin from the pineal gland. And therefore, the instruction is given out as to when to release wake-promoting chemicals like orexin and when to release sleep-promoting chemicals. That's part of the regulation of orexin, but another part of regulation of orexin is independent of your sleep-wake schedule. It's dependent on your body's energy balance. And this brings us back to fasting, which is to say that when an animal is placed under conditions of starvation, then the orexin system senses a change in the energy balance of the organism, and it does something remarkable. Because human beings are the only species that will deliberately deprive themselves of sleep for no apparent good reason. The only time that we see this in nature is under extreme circumstances. A good example is in some species when they're giving birth. Killer whales, for example, when they leave the pod, they go out to to a different location, they give birth to a calf, and then they will sleep deprive themselves to protect the calf on the way back to the main pod. The other example is starvation. When animals go under conditions of starvation, which essentially is fasting, a fasting signal, then these orexin cells sense the change in the energy balance. They start dumping out more orexin and they force the animal artificially awake for a longer period of time. The animal will selectively sleep less. Why is this? Because it's recognizing that the amount of time the animal is normally awake for it to forage for food in its standard perimeter of geography is not sufficient because it's starving. So it needs to stay awake for longer so it can forage in a broader perimeter and stay away from starvation. Now, when you go under conditions of fasting, this is what I think is happening, that you are giving the body an evolutionary ancient signal of starvation. And what happens the brain kicks in, it dumps more orexin into the system, and therefore your sleep becomes compressed. Now that sleep, when it gets compressed, one of the things that it does, and we see this when we do sleep restriction therapy for patients with insomnia, is that the quality of their sleep will actually increase a little bit. Now, you can't sustain that, and you never want to sustain that, and you similarly don't want to sustain that in fasting. But it's partly the reason why you see some of your sleep metrics improve, because The brain is trying to do more within a shorter period of time, but that's not sustainable. P.S. You can't do that all of the time, and we understand that from the science, but for that short time. But I think it's also the other reason that explains the description I was telling you where people will say, I'm sleeping less, and if I were to be sleeping this little when I'm not fasting, I'd feel terrible. I'd feel very sleepy during the day, but I'm not. I actually feel wide awake. I feel pretty good. I think it's because of orexin